Hi, my name is Song. I'm the creator of Tower Defense Toolkit. In this video, I'm going to talk about some more advanced scene setup. Well, I said advanced scene setup. It's basically just pathing and the platform, uh, as these are the two major components that are made up of a, a level design. Yep. So we're gonna start from the tricky one, the build platform. So, as you can see, this is a standard build platform setup. You have something like this you have the platform component but actually what you really need as a basic requirement for a platform is that a primitive plane like this one right uh, if I play the level now as you can see this is a valid platform well this is not right because this has been assigned to build manager right so this haven't so what ba this is actually basically a normal primitive plane and there's nothing special about it apart from it has been assigned a grid material right and right say now let's make it two and assign this to the build manager right what happened is you see instantly this will become a build platform and the build manager automatically assign a build co uh, a platform component on it so um, by default all the towers will be enabled of course and that's about it and the size doesn't matter really um, it will automatically adjust itself to fit the grid size specified here so 1.5 it will be a factor of 1.5 so see so yeah so that's how easy you can sell a build platform but it can get pretty tricky and the thing you should know is the mesh collider is the only essential bit on the platform the mesh renderer is not it's basically there to show the grid if you disable the grid you still can build on it so what this means is that this is pretty much there for a reference we can substitute in our custom mesh let's say I put in a cube for this one so adjust it 1 1 no it should be 10 sorry right minus 0.5 right and if you ever do that it means if you ever use a custom mesh for your platform you should always disable any collider in it so yeah so you end up with a box with a in the, with a tile grid on top of it actually you can shift this a bit more downwards make it so 0.6 yeah then the grid become more clearer right so this is one of the exam this actually this is how all the example platform is done in the example scene. I'm just going to find one such as this one. Right? So basically what you have is a platform with a cube uh, under its hierarchy and just place pitch perfect so that it appears that is a cube with a grid draw on top of it right so and there's more to it that you can do for instance in this level where you have a complex shape of platform now how do you do that um, now we need to look at this looks very complex um, but it, actually what it is is if you remove all this let's remove all this one now 
you end up with a platform with a mesh collider enabled and a mesh renderer disabled. So if I enable it, it looks like this. Yep. Now, pretty much all of it can be built, right? But why, when I enable Okay, when I have all this, you can't build on it. In fact, you can't see any of it. Right? Can't build here. Alright? Don't mind the error. Um, yeah, this is because I have used a block, which means another collider placed precisely in this area, this tree section here to block it that means whenever you try to place a tower in this area it will detect there's a collider there there's a, another collider there so you won't be able to build on it and since I disable the mesh renderer I put in three additional one just to give it an appearance of course this has to be pre-adjusted because Whenever the build manager adjusts the texture for you, it only do this one right here. Um, yeah, it only adjust this one, so it fits. It doesn't know that there's another tree over here, or in fact, it can make it four, make it more complex. Yeah, so you have to readjust, adjust this yourself, and then place it pitch perfect. So can remove this basically yeah so you can see in a nutshell is what I have is three blocks that cut off this area and three additional platform with mesh collider disabled um, placed there and for appearance sake so that's how you build a complex platform or even another example if you look at this one here is the terrain demo. Right, so what you have is just one platform, have the mesh disabled, and one block to cut off this section here, and two additional appearance platforms there. Notice the mesh collider is disabled and this cube is disabled. I mean in terms of the renderer. Right, so there you go. That's how you build a complex mesh. You can in fact replace this cube with any custom mesh you want. So yeah, you can make let's say a space platform or whatever. And I think that's conclude the platform and then I like to talk a bit about the path. So the good thing about this oh I, I actually forgot something uh, about the platform. So if you have this many platform um, you can simplify you can save yourself some trouble means you don't need to assign every single one of them to this build manager. In fact, what you need to do is just check this. Auto search for platform. So if I don't do this, you see, there will be no collide, no platforms. None of this will be recognized. Okay, there's nothing. In fact, it gives me error because I click on unrecognized collider. And now if I enable it, Voila! See, it's all being found. But there's a catch to this. To enable to enable this to work properly, you have to assign this a layer. Uh, I forgot. Okay, let's just call this thirty one. Thirty. Thirty nine. Thirty eight. Seven, 
Let's expect bots to do it. Okay. As you can see here, so platform layer is 28. So you have a platform layer, you can change this, of course. Then it will follow this, whatever you assign here. So if you want to use um, 20, 29 as the platform layer, yeah, by all means change that. Yep. For now, we'll use 28. So you need to make sure all this lot here has been assigned to layer 28. So if I change that to default, yeah. So play again. That won't work. Only this tree will have been found and recognized as platform. The rest, no, they won't. Okay, so there's a tip there. If you want to build a level with multiple platform, yeah, you can save yourself a little trouble by using this auto search for platform. And yeah, I thought I mentioned this, but I've said again, you can enable and disable individual tower on the platform. So even if the build manager says that you can build all this, and if I do that, that means I only be able to build these two on this platform. Right. And that's about it. That's about that's all you have about platforms. Um and then we have path. Uh that's only one thing really. Uh the thing about path is it's very very flexible. You can assign anything to it, in fact. It will just recognize the position you can apply, uh, assign any platform to it without it recognize itself as a platform it will just use that position and you can overlap them as well means both of them can share waypoints so if path one let's say i want to cro cross over to this at some point i just need to do that and then say pop six and seven so what happened is at this point this path turns goes here and follow this route and then cut back to its own and let's see so you can see the arrow coming yep so this goes here cut back and then continue through yep so you can do this uh, with a platform as well um, you might have noticed in this level so basically what you have is one platform the two path so each of them start from here and then go to the platform and then ends here if I expand it a bit Perhaps you can see more clearly. Yeah. So this is waypoint. This is path two and path one. Right. So that's pretty much everything about this um, advanced scenes layout. As you can see, you can do a lot of things with it. There's a lot of combination you can have. And that, I think, is one of the most cool stuff. Yeah, it's the coolest. Sorry, my English failed me there. It's the coolest stuff you can do with TDTK, if I'm honest. Right, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, it's a bit too long already. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.